Hi students. Hey, welcome back. And this video is going to actually help to explain to you how rotation works. All right. Now, uh, I hope that you actually liked and learned a little bit more about the translation one. And matter of fact, just to go ahead and show you, I'm getting a lot more of mine done. Okay. Now, here we have a tessellational unit. Now, remember, we want to start off with a square. And I'm going to turn it around this way. So we can actually see that the negative is on the inside of the square. The negative is on the inside of the square. Over here, it's the same line, and it's on the outside of the square. It's positive. This line down here is now up here as a positive. So you have two positives that touch a corner, and you have two negatives that touch a corner. Now, as soon as you actually get that, you are going to be able to actually draw me a four inch by four inch square. Then I want you to go ahead and dissect it vertically and horizontally by two inches. You're going to have something that looks like this. Now, remember, this is that tessellational unit that we just showed you. And it's been placed in a four inch by four inch square that's been divided two inches by two inches. So remember, negative, 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 all are in the inside. Your positives are on the outsides, okay? Now, once you get that done, we want to go ahead and actually move it to another sheet of paper. And this is where you could use a window at home, or if you're in my classroom, you could use the light boxes, okay? Now, what we've done is we've sort of started... Uh, let's go over here. We sort of started right here in this corner and I measured a half of an inch. All right. You want to go under under an inch. So you could actually start off with a three fourths of an inch or a half an inch, whatever is easier for you. I always thought that the half of inch was a lot easier to work with. So you make a mark and along the paper, you make another mark and maybe you might want to use a couple of them if you're using this long 12, 18 inch by 12 inch size paper because your rulers aren't going to actually stretch all the way across. But you can actually have a straight line. Now, I also ended up doing that straight line down over here as well. All right. So then when I actually took this unit, I took this paper and I lined that unit up right here so it actually touches. Then if you actually look at the top, I lined it up again so it touches. Now, sometimes it may not just touch. It may barely get there, okay? And that's all right because it doesn't have to actually touch exactly. Just as long as you have one side over here touching and then one side over here touching. Once you get this one done, then you can move on to the next one. And if you look, it touches right here and it touches right up here, right on that line. And now you know where to put it over here. And it starts to create a new shape. Now we're going to actually do down here. And we're actually moving on to actually create it this way. And as you can see, we start to see the same shape as we see right here. All right. So we need to take another one and we'll put it right here. Then we'll finish it off by actually putting one more and one more here. Now, in this assignment here, you guys can get by with actually just only coloring. Let's see, there's going to be one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. 24 units. That's it. Not to compare to like if you do the translation, and the translation is going to end up actually having 40 squares to color, all right, or 40 units. Now, so it all depends on what you're liking and what you're willing to do for the project, okay? But you can end up actually getting some pretty cool ideas, all right? And some really nice looking work. Now, just remember that it started just with a simple little unit like this. So again, it's just a square and you do a line here that's on the inside of the square. You do the same line out here on the outside of the square. I used a number three. 
Then I used a shark's fin down here, and I transformed the shark's fin up here. Okay? So then I just basically rotated it. Look how this is. You got the two humps here. Turn the paper. You got the two humps right here. It's the number three. Turn it again. Doesn't matter which way you turn it. They're always going to be in this up, upper area. So once you end up getting that done, then you move on to this piece of paper here and you just trace it. A lot of students are starting to recognize that this is actually pretty easy. And they're like, it looks complicated, but it's easy to do. That's what the fun part of it is. And when you actually get coloring added to it, they're going to look amazing. So if you guys actually do your work at this at home, you're going to have a fun time with it. Most of all this is just repetitive work, just tracing your work. And using a window like the ones behind me or the ones you have at home can actually help you out easy. Now, of course, I have light boxes in my classroom, all right? But students don't have to wait in line for those. At home, you have your own window, and it's a, like a big light box. You just have to hold it up against the window. And if you have a little bit of piece of tape, put them up in the corners, and that will help you. All right? So look forward to seeing you in the next video, and we'll look for some amazing work from you students. All right? So have a fun time.